The Center on Domestic Violence brings Dr. Robert Jensen for an interesting presentation October 25th. The lecture, called The Price of Pleasure, covers Dr. Jensen's years of research on the pornography industry. Earlier this year, multiple Colorado counties made attempts to secede from Colorado to form a new state, Northern Colorado. Sources say 11 counties are going to vote this November on the matter. Coloradans describe the new state logo as ugly and boring. The rebranding effort cost taxpayers $2 million. The chairman of MSU Denver's marketing department, Darren Dubber Smith, says the logo looks like something that identifies a hazardous material. A federal judge has ordered two Denver Steak and Shake restaurants to shut down immediately after favoring the national chain's request. The corporate officials argued that the franchise owners were charging too much for menu items. Be part of the campus life. Studies show that involvement on campus helps create and change the student experience and social embracement. More colleges are designing and opening dorms to integrate students and activities offered throughout the college. There are only 99 days left for those of you graduating in December. Today is the last day to turn in your graduation application. This application only takes a few minutes to fill out and can be returned to the office of the registrar in the Student Success Building. Now, Kevin, you're going to have to wait because we're kicking things off with tennis. Metro State freshman Naomi Holopainen wins the South Central Region Intercollegiate Tennis Association Championship this past Sunday. Now, men's soccer took on CSU Pueblo last weekend in a heated contest. We pick it up from the second half where Metro State controls the pace of the game but is unable to score despite outshooting CSU Pueblo 17-7. Metro made a road trip to New Mexico this past weekend to play current Armac foes New Mexico Highlands. Four different players scored in the first half for the Roadrunners. Thanks guys, here's what we can expect this weekend. Beginning tomorrow, we'll have a high of 50 and lows in the 30s for the Mile High City. The sun will shine for the springs as well with a likely high of 50 and low of 28. Hello Metro, welcome to this week's segment of Entertain Met. I'm Karen Vega and I'm here to catch you up on the latest gossip from Hollywood to the Mile High City. And there's been love in the air for many Hollywood sweethearts this year, but we've decided that our favorites are the newlyweds Jessica Biel and Justin Timberlake who tied the knot in a romantic Italian ceremony this past October. Following them are the stunning Eva Mendes and the haughty Ryan Gosling who maintain a strong and happy relationship. Good for them. College is becoming more expensive. Higher education is a challenge for many. Good news though, more funding could be on its way. HSI status allows an institution or it, it gives an institution the opportunity to apply for uh, federal grants. Grants that would not only benefit Hispanic students, but the entire MSU campus. I think that would be great because, I mean, as college students, every funding that we get is great because we work and we go to school. As a Hispanic, I would, I think that's really nice, you know, it would help benefit all of the other students in all cases, you know, even to having a nice classroom, having more technology available to us. Committee co-chair Judy diaz Bonaquisti tells us that in order for MSU Denver to achieve designation of a Hispanic serving institution, at least 25 percent of enrollment must be Hispanic. We currently have 19.2 percent. Dr. Luis Torres believes we're making quick progress to achieve this. We're a little bit ahead of where we thought we would be in order to reach HSI designation by approximately 2018. What would this mean for students, you ask? I feel like more students will open up to coming to school and if there's more opportunities, more resources, then it opens doors to so many students, especially Hispanics or minorities. Compared to other schools, MSU Denver has the best value in Colorado, despite the fact that it gets less funding than other institutions. HSI status would raise funding to the level of those other schools. For the Met Report, Karen Vega. The new year and the start of the spring semester have brought various changes to the campus of Auraria. Among these are the new RTD College Pass Smart Card, which has many confused and perhaps even annoyed. Nobody really knows what's going on. And so how does this new system work? Well, if you're riding the light rail, you simply select your trip, tap your card on the card reader, and board the train. Seems like easy steps to follow. However, many think public transportation should not be so complex. 
Because it takes up a lot of time for me having to come here and scan instead of me just hopping on a light rail. I mean, this is overall RTD's big change that they're moving towards, which is contactless uh, technology. Um, this is something that they moved all the colleges to. So every college that has the College Pass program, including your area campus, uh, has been moved to this, as well as all employers who have the uh, Echo Pass program. Failure to scan one's card can result in the suspension of your card for the remainder of the school year. Every student was given an FAQ, a frequently asked questions that list and talk about kind of some of those issues, including the website talks about it. And the information that's provided on there is that for light rail, they do expect every student to scan their card prior to boarding the actual light rail train. It's still early to determine if this new system will be successful. For the Met Report, Karen Vega. I'm here in the Hospitality Learning Center catching up with students and professors six months after the opening of the new facility. The, uh, the building is, you know, phenomenal. Really uh, like teaching in this great environment. I think the students appreciate it too. And they certainly do. It's just a lot more open. We have a lot more room, so it's nice for all of us. It's awesome. I mean, I'm kind of glad I waited till the last minute to be able to take these classes at the very end of my degree. This living laboratory includes 150 guest rooms, 7,500 square feet of meeting space, and 28,000 square feet of academic space. For Professor Krugman, this is certainly a dream come true. I pinch myself every morning just to be sure I'm not dreaming. It really has helped a lot because we have uh, access to really state-of-the-art equipment and facilities. Many find themselves having trouble choosing their favorite room, and for others, the choice is clear and simple. Uh, it's got to be the sensory analysis lab. That is just a really great room. I've had a lot of clients that have rented that room. It's just been very popular, and they're just really loving the room, and, and it get a lot of uh, people that are visiting saying that they would wish they were going back to college. With all the innovations this learning center consists of, it's easy to see why people wish they were part of MSU Denver's hospitality program. For students taking classes here in the HLC, this building has transformed their learning experience. For the Met Report, Karen Vega.